Oh yeah, I was definitely going to get to this after the Dante's Inferno video. Sucks that it took this long, but hey, better now than never. Just like Dante's Inferno, this game was yet another holdover for God of War 3, which is the shit that I actually wanted to play that year. However, unlike Dante's Inferno, which I thought was just I, Darksiders ended up being pretty damn dope. 14 years later and it's still pretty dope to the point where I can confidently say that out of all of the God of War clones that came out during this time, this was definitely the best of them. And the reason is because it doesn't just take from God of War, but from a buttload of games. Zelda, Devil May Cry, Diablo, Vigil took the good shit in all of those games to not only create something unique, but something that's surprisingly cohesive. Looking back, this game was pretty damn bold for an untested studio's first game with a new IP, especially during a time where the industry was starting to become more risk averse relying on sequels. They packed a lot of shit in here. Luckily it did work out scoring well and selling decently, it didn't break the industry or nothing, but there ain't nothing wrong with being a cult classic. So in the world of Darksiders, you got the kingdoms of heaven, hell, and earth. Heaven is full of angelic people and hell is obviously full of demonic people and both of these factions have been at war with each other for a hot minute. Earth aka the kingdom of man is weak as hell but is mostly left alone due to this mediator called the Shard Council telling the other two to leave them alone. They're all about keeping the balance and they've created a council of warriors called the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse to enforce this. Heaven and Hell agree to seven seals that can't be broken until man is strong enough to join the war. If they're broken, then it's the apocalypse for them and the horsemen will be called to deal with it. Well, that's exactly what happens and we play as one of these horsemen in war who was confused as to why he was the only one summoned and that the seventh seal wasn't actually broken. Some heavenly dude named Abaddon is killed by a demon named Straga and when war faces off against the same demon, he mysteriously loses his powers and gets murked too. Bro was saved by the council but gets berated and blamed for causing the apocalypse prematurely. Determined to clear his name, War sets off to Earth again to find the culprits behind this mess, but he ain't alone. The Council has issued a Watcher to be at War's side at all times and to contain him if he ever acts out of line. War returns to an Earth 100 years later that's been ravaged by Hell's forces. Some powerful demon named the Destroyer seems to be behind everything, but that asshole is apparently at some place called the Black Tower, which can only be accessed by taking the hearts of his chosen demon generals who are in their own domains throughout the world. At least that's what this demon named Samael tells him, who wants the hearts for himself in exchange to opening the way. So for the rest of the game, that's what War tries to do, slaughters both demons and angels, forms alliances and slowly gets his powers back to confront this destroyer and clear his name. Oh, welcome back, horseman. You could have not, but I suppose that isn't your way, is it? So this game still looks pretty damn good, man. It's clearly a 360 game, but some strong art direction with the character designs and environments really carried this one through. With the former, yeah, you could definitely see the Blizzard influences. All of these angels and demons look straight out of Diablo. And War looks like a damn World of Warcraft character with this big ass bulky armor. Just look at this fucking guy. This is like three different character designs in one. He's practically a death knight, phony baloney, Arthas Menethil looking ass. I joke, but the over the top designs do fit the insane apocalyptic vibe. You're constantly reminded that this is an epic story about higher level beings based off the visuals alone. 
However, what assists with this is the strong otherworldly voices from all of the characters. The voice acting in this game is good as hell, and looking at the cast here, it had to be because this is a fucking all-star roster of voice actors. Liam O'Brien, Mark Hamill, Phil Lamar, Troy Baker, and a bunch of others. I don't know how Vigil was able to assemble such a cast for a game like this, but I ain't complaining because they definitely make some of these cutscenes worth sitting through. War. Are you here to play execution? They should have set all four of you. I have no interest in killing you, Samael. Ah, the Destroyer is beyond your reach, beyond mine. Has prison made you a coward? And someone needs a breath mint. Let's start with me, not me. Okay, pass it down. Mm. The world is appropriately dreadful looking with destroyed structures everywhere, but the thing that I like is that despite the world being hellacious, there's a nice variety in how all of these different locations look. Some of them are of course elemental based, but they're not so straightforward. All of the dungeons have a certain theme going on that surprisingly doesn't have much to do with the standard elements that you see in like a million other games. Like there's no typical fire, earth, or water dungeon, nah. We got a maze like sewer, a gothic church, a city overtaken by spiders, and a grimy ass desert. Not saying that these are like the most original locales, but they could have easily gone with the usual dungeon types that we've seen in like a million different games. Spices up the world while also maintaining the whole grim dark aesthetic that this game is clearly going for. But Joe Mad's art style is one thing. This is one of those games where that sauce is mostly with its gameplay. So on the surface, this game looks like your typical 2010s hack and slash, right? You play as this one man badass with a big weapon that goes from room to room slaughtering anything in your way. You got a decent list of combos that you mix and match that makes you look cool while doing it. And you slowly acquire other items throughout the journey that both diversify the combat and helps out with non-combat related stuff such as traversal and puzzles. A lot of puzzles. You look at this combat with this combo counter and all these brutal execution kills and you think you're getting an experience very similar to God of War where the game is very combat focused and designed to make you feel like a badass. And in the beginning that is pretty much the case. There's a lot of good old slicing and dicing that feels pretty damn cool. Your attacks have a long sweep where you're hitting multiple guys at once, the animations look clean, and the feel of each hit feels weighty and impactful. Mid to late game when you've acquired all your moves and have some stuff upgraded is when you start to really feel like a badass, effortlessly applying pressure both in air and on the ground without letting enemies even touch you. Sprinkle in some special moves and an OH SHIT button and yeah the combat almost feels great. Almost. When compared to other character action games certain things are a bit clunky, like all of your defensive options such as Dodging, countering, and blocking don't really flow with your offensive moves. The block and counter in particular feels very situational as so many enemies in this game have heavy attacks that go right through that shit. This had me dashing a lot to avoid getting hit, but even that didn't really feel right as there's a noticeable delay after each dash that halts whatever the fuck you were doing. And this also applies to your offense where you quickly find out that there's not much in terms of experimentation. Get used to seeing the same three combos as those three are practically the most efficient at killing things. And despite having multiple weapons and having the ability to switch between them on the fly, for whatever reason there's not many opportunities to extend combos between weapon switches. Like it's possible, but it's far from seamless. I'm willing to admit that maybe I'm not good enough, but I've peeped other people's gameplay too and even they aren't doing anything crazy. The combat is still enjoyable enough though. When you finally get to the church two hours in is when the game really starts to open up. You get your first item in the crossblade and you're given a bunch of puzzles to solve which involve lighting up these weird bombs to destroy certain rocks. There's a lot of getting certain items and bringing them back to places and getting special keys to unlock these eye doors and it's from here where you start to notice a familiar gameplay loop. 
arrive at the place, fight your way through to get the new item, use that item to defeat the mini boss, use that item to get to new parts around the place that were previously blocked off, and then use that same item to defeat the real boss. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's damn near every Zelda game before Breath of the Wild. I swear the only reason this game gets compared to God of War so much is because it's super edgy and you're doing this to motherfuckers. But the more you play this game, the more the Legend of Zelda influences shine through. There's a lot of combat, but there's an equal amount of focus on puzzle solving. And for the most part, the puzzles here are pretty damn good, man. Shit, I might be in the minority on this, but I enjoyed the puzzles in this game as much as the combat. And honestly feels like there was more effort put here than the combat. There's some long stretches, especially in the Black Tower, where you're not seeing any enemies, and it's just back-to-back -back puzzles building on top of each other. Can easily see this being a drag to the hardcore action types that just want combat, but as someone that actually enjoys a good puzzle, I didn't really mind too much. In the beginning, many of the puzzles revolve around switches, lifts, and igniting these bombs to get where you need to go, and even here, it's impressive how much mileage they get out of this. You go from straight up detonation, to stringing along multiple bombs to reach a detonation, to lighting up flames to reach a bomb across an entire hallway. And then from here, this is all intertwined with puzzles that involve stopping time, to portals, and more. There's a natural escalation in complexity, and the utilization of several of your tools to reach the solution feels euphoric when you actually figure it out. Especially with all the portal puzzles in the Black Tower, where you have to guide all these beams back to the center. They do a lot here from using the portal's momentum to get up to platforms, to transporting objects for weight distribution, to shooting portals within portals to get portals on out of reach surfaces. Of course all of this ain't nothing new as games like Portal exist, but normally you wouldn't see this in a hack and slash. In general the puzzles in this game are that perfect balance of being readable, but complex. All the clues are right in front of your face, and it only takes a little bit of tinkering and a tiny bit of brain power to solve them. Didn't need to use a walkthrough once, which is usually a good sign. And the puzzle focused design also bleeds into the bosses where you're usually using recently acquired items to get either to the boss's weak spot or render them vulnerable for a couple moments to get some shots in. Again, very Zelda-esque. Can't say I found any particular one to be all that exciting as they are all essentially just one big puzzles instead of dynamic entities that you're actually fighting against but they do cap off the respective dungeons both thematically and mechanically. As much as I like all of the offensive options that this game gives you, it does feel like certain moves and tools were added at the last second just for the hell of it. You can pick up cars and throw them at people but I swear that ability is only useful in the opening against Straga. The Earth Caller is an ability even though it only communicates with three of these things in the beginning. The gun does shit damage and is only really useful against the Stygian Worms. And even your other primary weapons like the Scythe and the Gauntlet quickly fall behind the Chaos Eater in damage and you won't be able to kill a damn thing with them. Unless you're actively killing things equally with all your weapons but then you run into the situation where none of your weapons can kill fast enough. You know, even though I like the Black Tower and all of its puzzles, it probably didn't need to be that long. Instead of three beams getting run all the way back through the stage, I think two would have sufficed. After the first one, I'm pretty sure players got the gist. In general, this game could have gotten cut down as there are some padding moments, especially with the end where you have to go back through many of the previous stages to gather seven Armageddon pieces. I don't know who at Vigil thought this was a good idea, but it just felt like a massive waste of time, especially since the fast travel doesn't really take you near these shits, and barely anything has changed in these areas. Feels like they needed to justify having an interconnected world in some way. Do it! Tear out her heart while she still lives! I want to hear her scream! I can plant your every wish. Can you restore the balance? <laughs> no wonder Samael wants this thing. It's coursing with power. You really think he's going to let you live long enough to collect on your end? 
So the story in this game isn't really all that interesting, if I'm going to be honest. It's just war doing shit for otherworldly beings around Earth. Which could be interesting if War and the Watcher were fun characters to watch, but they're really not. I get the Watcher being this unlikable asshole as you're supposed to take joy in the end when War finally gets free of him and takes his sweet revenge. Thing is, you're not really given any reason to get behind War other than the fact that he's a badass with a big sword, as if games don't already have plenty of those. Thing is, even here, War isn't even all that cool because the dude has like no charisma. He's just a serious brooding edgelord from beginning to end. He does have an arc though where he does go from council lapdog to realizing that they're full of shit but even that didn't really do much to draw me in. Shit until the end I totally forgot that the whole reason war went on this quest was to clear his name because the main goal quickly shifts to just trying to get to the black tower. Wasn't curious about that mystery at all until they reminded you of it again in the aforementioned level. If anything, I was more curious on why Sam Iel was so keen on having Ward kill the Destroyer's Chosens. Honestly, the background lore stuff sounds more interesting than what's going on here. Some big ass war between heaven and hell that happened off screen? Like where's the game on that? I do like how it feels like all of these different factions have a long history, but just like War, none of the other characters were all that interesting either. The game does end on a pretty cool cliffhanger with the other horsemen coming down, but to this day, the series story has yet to proceed past this point, which is just disappointing. I'm ready for a Darksiders 4, but I guess in the meantime, I'll just replay what we got. You will be hunted. The White City for certain. The Council and there will be others. You would wage this war alone? No. Not alone. So yeah, that's Darksiders. The best of the so-called God of War clones and still a pretty damn good game all of these years later. This game is really competent. The combat's good, art style's cool, the puzzles are great, and the level design is beyond solid. It ain't original in the slightest, but it succeeds in taking ideas that have already worked and repackaging them in its own way. Thumbs up from me and the game can be copped on damn near every modern platform. So yeah, if this looks like your thing, pick it up. Anyway, that's all I gotta say about this one. Do the usual stuff to boost this video in the algorithm and I'll see y'all next time.